on this computer. Okay, cool. And I should have shared my screen first, but hold on, let me just do this. Mm -mm -mm. Can I, how do you, I can't do that and this at the same time, can I? Unless you just show the side slides. All right, hold on, share screen. Share screen. All right, can, you guys, can you see the slides and are they like whole, like the whole, like little? Okay, perfect, because sometimes it's like, it's weird about it, or sometimes it'll kick me off. All right, so what I wanted to do tonight is I wanted to talk about the first vital behavior, right? So we've got four vital behaviors. Hopefully you guys all know what they are. Invite, invite, invite is the number one. Two is be proof the product works. So drink your Shakeology and do your workouts. Three is personal development. So make sure that you are reading something positive or listening to something positive every day and putting good thoughts in your head so you're in the right space to do the rest of the things we just mentioned. And the last thing is recognition. So I wanted to go into that. So Samantha Previtt is kicking butt. This girl is brand new, just came on the scene, and I wanted to give her a huge shout out for being the top coach for Project Fearless. It just goes to show you that it doesn't matter how long you've been in this business. She outworked all of us, right? You guys, she's brand new. 22 points on the board. That means that she helped 11 people get started last month. She helped 11 people on their health and fitness journey. That means in one month or less, she got herself to almost diamond or beyond. So that's a pretty incredible feat. And helping that many people is amazing. And I think that it's all about your belief. When you believe you can do it and you start taking those right actions and you start following what your coach tells you to do, and you know, doing those things and it all falls into place. I don't like how I can't see the chat. I can't see the chat right now, guys. Sorry, so I missed that. But um, and then those who help five or more, Katie Meserve. I don't know if you guys saw this, but Katie was on fire. Like she was at, I believe, SE4 the two days, two or three days before um the end of the month. And then on the last day, she signed like eight coaches. She signed six coaches, I think the last day and two the day before. So essentially she signed eight coaches within like 24 hours, which is just insane. Um, and <laughs> so congrats. <laughs> and then let's see here. Kylie with 18, Mariah with 18, myself with 14, Shannon with 12, Danielle and Rachel both with 10. You guys, what I love about this is that the reason a lot of these people got to such higher numbers in their success club this month is because they, was, they seriously were just practicing with those donut invites and celebrating the action that they were taking. So if they started a conversation, we celebrated it. If they, you know, sent out a donut, we celebrated. So, you know, make sure that you're taking action. And if you guys are not in that I did it all for the cookie group, get your butts in there and start participating. It's strictly a brag group. You can't get in there and complain. You can't talk about anything else. You can just share what you are doing. And we're gonna celebrate the crap out of every action that you take. But the other thing is, is that it's showing other people that they can do it. It's giving them ideas. They're learning from like the things that people are posting in there. And it's motivating them to get out there and do it because they're like, well, if she can, I can, right? So that's awesome. And then those who help three plus people, Amanda Waite, Ryan Crocker, Erica Larson, Sydney, Shelby, Bridget, sorry, I'm like choking over here, Erica, <laughs> Meg Lyon, Tammy Bill. Your, your name always shows up as Megan on here because I just downloaded it from an Excel spreadsheet, so sorry. Um, Paula, Alicia, Renata, you guys kick butt. You should be very proud of yourself. And every other single person who had even one point on this board means that you helped at least one person last month. What I would love to see is that we have to make that little area at the bottom smaller and the one at the top bigger. So everybody who didn't get in there last month, kill it this month. You absolutely can and move up. And those who help three plus, move up and help five plus. Those who helped five plus, move up and help three plus. You guys can all do it. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention, I just wanted to give a huge shout out to Brienne because she messaged me today and she's at SE eight already and it's the fifth of the month and to Ryan Crocker as well. Who's at SE six right now on the fifth of the month. And then I'm at SE 12 right now at the, uh, fifth of the month. So I'm just going to keep going because guys, that's because last month we put a crap ton of effort in. So the more effort you put in each month, it makes every month after that 
a little bit easier each time. I'm actually gonna make this smaller so I can't see this because otherwise I can't see the slides. Cool? Cool. All right, next. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna get into this a little bit. How to donut. And I know that you guys keep seeing this all around the team page and maybe some of you don't even know what it is. And so I wanted to talk about it a little bit. Um, so Carl Deichler created a video for us and you know, for those who are new, Carl Deichler has this group happening right now, and it's almost like a coaching challenge group, which has been fantastic. It's certainly reignited my fire. I think it's actually been a trickle down effect of this team. You know, Carl just came through me, we gone through the team, and now everybody is like feeling like the momentum and they're taking these actions. But he went on and he talked about how sometimes you know, inviting is the hardest thing that we have to do. And that's why I wanted to focus on that, on that one topic for this call, invite, 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 that first vital behavior. It's the first one for a reason. It's the most important. If you're not inviting, your business isn't going anywhere. And I literally think they said invite, 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 because it's that important that it has to be repeated that many times. And that's the point is that you should be just inviting over and over and over again. But he talked about how it's so hard and like he remembered back in the day when he used to work at a call center and he had to make cold calls. And so cold calling sucked. So he would just make sure that he did it all right away so that he could go ahead and then get into, you know, the calls that were really easy, the ones that he had with current relationships with customers that they already had, you know, upselling people and things like that. The things that were like a little bit easier because they were the warm market. And so he related this to baseball. And for those of you who know baseball, you know that, you know, the batter doesn't just get up there cold and jump up there and whack at the ball and hit a home run, right? Instead, they put the little donuts, they look like donuts, they're little metal donuts on their bat and they start swinging like this and they warm themselves up and then they take a few practice swings and then they're all warmed up. Their body's good to go. It's a little easier to go out there and whack the ball out of the park. So that's what the donuts are about. It's about getting warmed up. So it's getting the hardest part done first. So the rest of the day is so much easier. He recommends that you do five before you even get out of bed, before you can even think about it. I love the analogy of thinking about the fact that like we tell people, right, who are having a hard time getting going with their health and fitness. We say, you know what? Go to sleep with your workout clothes on, put your sneakers right there, put your energized by your bed, put your alarm clock across the room, you know, make it so that you just start that workout before your brain even realizes what you're doing. It's the same thing with these donuts. Just start doing it while you're laying there in bed before you've even had your coffee. And all of a sudden you've got invites out and you can get up and start your day. And it's not this daunting task. I also like how they're called donuts because it sounds so much like more fun. But while I was making these today, these slides today, I really wanted donuts, which I was like, I love how it's like, we did it all for the cookie and donuts when we're working in the health and fitness business, but whatever. So I recommend doing five before you get out of bed and then five before you go to sleep at night. And you can use the sample scripts, you guys. We've made it really, really super duper simple for you. And I put the link right here because this link will lead you. And don't worry, I'll post the slides after this so you don't have to worry about like writing it down right now. But this link right here is an awesome document that Meg actually put together. She took um, some of the scripts that I had used, that she had used, Katie had used, Kylie had used, put them together in a nice little package for us. It's a little Evernote. You can click on it. You can go over there. They're right there for you to use. You can put them in text replacement. You can do whatever you want with them. Or you can do your own thing, but if you're going to do your own thing, just make sure it's very straightforward. Like this isn't like an all around, you know, type of thing. This is like, Hey, not sure you're interested. Got a group starting this date. Are you, you know, what do you want in more information? You're not going all over the place with this thing. Keep it straightforward and make it very easy for yourself. Just copy paste, right? It's five different people. You're done. And it's so easy guys. By the time you do five, you're kind of like addicted and you're like, boop, 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 and like you did 20 in like 30 seconds. So, if you're using Teamsy, then you can just go right down that list, right? So you're like, okay, that's great, Joan. I'm going to send out these donuts. I have a script to do it, but who do I send them to? Okay, so if you're using Teamsy and you've uploaded your Facebook list and all that stuff into Teamsy, under the prospects part of it, it's going to give you a list of people to reach out to every single day. Really super duper simple. Open up your Teamsy and do those first five to 10 people right there. Done, right? If you're not using Teamsy yet, you can go over to Facebook and just go to your own profile, go to your friends list, under your friends list, 
because typically they put the people you talk to most at the top. Scroll down a bit so you get to the people you haven't really talked to a lot. And it could be people, you guys, that you've talked to, but you just never have invited. It could be people that, you know, you've been scared to invite. It could be people that, you know, you started talking to and having a conversation with and, you know, you got as far as talking about, like, you know, they're doing a pageant or they're, you know, a dog lover or whatever, that you just are like, hey, you know, are you interested at all in joining a challenge group? Not sure if you have any health and fitness goals. I've got one starting at this date. So that's really as easy as it is. That's what you do. So that's what a donut is. That's why we do it. That's how many we do. That's what you say to them. And that's who you do it to. Broke it down, made it really easy, right? This business should be super duper ridiculously simple, simple and duplicatable. Because then once you know this, you can turn around and tell your coach to do that, right? They made it like a no brainer. Okay. Why donut? We already talked about like the theory behind it, but as you guys have heard me say many, many times, inaction breeds fear. The longer you don't do this business, the more you build up in your head that it's scary to do or that you can't do it or that you can't be successful. You have these fear thoughts come in. You have these fear thoughts creep in. You have the thoughts and, um, you know, the things that other people are saying creep in. I know Shannon Taylor just posted in the team page, um, at the end of last week or beginning of this week that she had somebody say something nasty to her. Guess what? So did I last week. You know what though? Their opinions don't pay my bills. Their opinions don't build my dreams. Their opinions don't make me happy. They don't make me healthier. They don't help my family. They do nothing for me. So I don't care about them. And the more that I take action, the more I build up amazing things in my business, the more I see my business moving forward and the momentum growing and the money growing and the amount of people who are messaging me and telling me that I've helped them change their lives. And then that crap doesn't matter. But if you stay back in this little corner and you're not talking to people and you're not building your business, all those fear thoughts are going to start creeping in and you're not, you're going to be paralyzed. So because inviting is the biggest fear for most people and an action breeds fear, we want to get you doing this immediately. The more you do it, the more you're going to desensitize yourself to it. It's like they say if you're scared of spiders or something that you're supposed to like be locked in a room with like a shit ton of spiders for a while and then all of a sudden no thank you like burn that bitch down but like that's what they say to do in order to get over it. It's the same type of thing, right? So and if we're focusing just on action, right? We're focusing on celebrating the action of you sending out donuts. We don't care about the response. I mean, obviously we want to help people and we care about that, but like, we don't care if we get a no because it's a cold invite, right? So we're like, we're expecting it. So it just gets rid of that. So it's like, you're not worried about that. You're celebrating the action. And then you're like, dude, got 20 donuts in today. And that's a win. That's a win. So we're eliminating that fear because the action is what's going to get you out of that fear. And the action is what breeds results in your business, which is going to keep you even more motivated. So how do you follow up on your donuts? The fortunes and the follow-up. You guys have heard me say this a bunch of times that like the most, the most people sign up between the sixth and 12th follow-up. That is a general sales statistic. Okay. And the thing is, is that 90% of people who are in sales, and yes, we're out there to help you guys, but we are in a sales business, right? We're selling them on the fact that we can help them. So, you know, 90% of people who are in a sales business only follow up one to two times, right? So you need to make sure that you're building follow-ups into your schedule. If you look back at my notebooks, because I used to do things all pen and paper, you can see that people never left my list. They continued going on. Even if it was a not right now, they just removed to like a new month or a couple months down the road. I always stayed in touch. We have people on this team, on this call, Kelly, who I reached out to in 2014, who just signed up last month. So they're never not, they're, they're never knows, they're just not right now. So you want to make sure that you're following up with people. All right. So how do you follow up with your donuts? So a really easy one. Hey, hope you had an awesome weekend. Hopefully you did something fun. I wanted to follow up from my last message. I'd love to have you in the group. Any current health and fitness goals you're working towards? or even easier. Is there any more info you'd like from me in regards to the group to help you decide whether it's something you'd be interested in? Or, hey lady, saw your post about blah, 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 blah. You can talk about something you saw on their page um, that you posted today and it reminded me to check in on you. I'd love to have you in the group. Have you ever considered any health and fitness goals you are working towards? Or, what's up so-and-so? I wanted to see if I could give you some more information. I'd love to have you in the group. It's so freaking fun and my girls are getting awesome results. 
Would you like some more info? You guys, it's very super duper simple. You can legitimately use one of these, any one that feels comfortable to you, or you can make up your own and you can go out there and do that. Again, you can save these right in the notes section of your phone or in text replacement and you can send them to people very easily. There you go. You have what you're going to say and you have the follow-up all ready for you. Done it for you. All right. So when to follow up. Okay. So you know why you're doing it, who you're sending it to, what you're sending them. You know you're following up with them and what you're saying to them. But now when do you do it? You set a follow-up for two days from your donut. So that way, if you don't hear back from them in between, because they could message you back, you, they don't just fall off the face of the, of the earth, right? So if you have Teamsy, you literally can put that person right in there as a connect and you can put the date, follow up two days from now. If you're a pen and paper person, you can use a book just like this. Hopefully you can see me. I don't know if you can see me or not, but I have my planner, right? So I would just put their names for two days from now. Or if this isn't enough space, I might just mark a piece of paper that says this date on the top of it and all my follow-ups for that date. Use whatever system works for you, but that's what I do. Now, if they don't respond to that follow-up, does that mean you're done? No, it does not mean you're done. That means you set a follow-up for four days from then, right? So now that's six days out from the initial message. It's a few days. It's not like you're following up with them every second and you send your second follow-up. Okay. Now at this point, if they have not messaged you from here, I would put them a week out. And a week out, I would comment on their Facebook page, like something that they've done, and then I would send them something non-beach body related, maybe something, you know, connecting with something they had just posted recently. And from there, if and from there, I would probably mark in Teamsy to not follow up with them for about a month. Now, if I was putting them in my book, I would move them to the next month. Now, what that means is it's not that they're going to fall off forever. It's just that they need a little bit more relationship building time. But now that I've sent them messages and liked things on their social media platform, chances are they're going to show up in my newsfeed more, which is going to give me more of an opportunity to like and comment on their stuff and for it to make it a warmer lead. So down the road, when I go to reach out to them because they pop up, I can start a conversation based on something that they posted and hopefully start building that relationship. Hope that makes sense. Okay. Now, <clears throat> donuts do not replace relationships, right? Things you need to do on a, on a consistently, on a consistent basis. See, I told you I did these slides last minute. So you need to post three to five times a day on your social media. And I recommend that you post both on your personal Facebook profile and your Instagram account. If you are a new coach in this business, in fact, if you are less than a five-star diamond in this business, I do not believe that you need to be putting together a Facebook business page yet. In fact, I think it's going to spread your time too thin. It's going to be overwhelming to be posting in so many different places at once. And you're trying to, you know, master so many things that you actually just don't do a good job anywhere. So I recommend your Facebook profile and your Instagram account. We have trainings on both of those things, you guys, that you can go and you can look up. So on the next page, I'm going to give you a little bit of some tips about what you can post about. However, real quick tip, if you're working out and drinking your shake and reading a book every day, you have three things right there that you can post about. So then I also recommend two to three call to action or invite posts a week minimum. So you need to know when your next challenge group is, when it, whether it's a free group, a coach sneak peek, a challenge group sneak peek, your paid group, doesn't matter to me what group it is, but you need to know what is next in your calendar coming up. And that's up to you. You're the coach. You decide when you're starting your groups. So if you know your group is starting on the 12th, this week, you bet your ass, you should be posting two to three times that you have a group coming up on the 12th and talk about the different things to different people that they should get involved with and why. Having an event in front of you gives you a date to give people and that builds urgency. So they're going to sign up with you right then and there rather than postponing. And then even though I'm telling you, you need to do these invite posts and you need to be posting consistently, a post is not an invite. You need to reach out to all who like your posts, Beachbody related or not, you should reach out to them. So if they posted, they liked my sneakers or if they posted, they, you know, they posted, they liked George. I put a post up today asking people's middle names. 
I will reach out to every single person who liked those posts and I will start conversations with them and start building that relationship with them and start having that conversation flow towards something that may be able to make turn into me helping them at some point. Now, tip, if you have not watched this yet, watch the find, share, invite call that you can find on my YouTube channel. You can also be added into the find, share, invite group that is self-led, it's self-paced group. It's an amazing training. Both of those things, you guys are going to go way deeper into what this slide says right here. And I would highly recommend that you go there because all of the coaches on this team that do really, really well do exactly what that training tells you to do. All right. So posting to attract your audience and build relationships. So I just told you how many times now I'm going to tell you what to post and the reason we do this. So you're like, what does posting have to do with inviting if you just told me that a post doesn't equal an invite? Your posts are what is going to help with the, with the inviting process because people do business with people that they know, like, and trust. People do business with people that they know, like, and trust. The more you post on social media about your personal life, the more you post and share your inner thoughts, your struggles, what you're going through, your workouts, your nutrition, what you like. Maybe you like hiking, maybe you like dogs, maybe you like wine, maybe you like tequila, maybe you're a foodie, maybe you like to travel, maybe you have a boyfriend, maybe you're engaged, whatever it might be, the more you're sharing about that stuff, the more people get to know you, the more they like you, the more they trust you, the more they are willing to do business with you. It's just like when you walk into an aisle of the grocery store and you see People Magazine and you pick up the cover because you see Kim Kardashian on it and you're like, oh, I know her because... I see her everywhere. So you start flipping through it, right? Or then she goes and recommends like, I don't know, her sister's lipstick. And you're like, okay, I'm going to buy this because I trust her and she always looks good. It's the exact same thing. It's the exact same thing. So you need to make sure that number one, before you even start any of this, that your profile is public. Your profile needs to be public. Otherwise it's useless. What's the point? When I go on Instagram and I see somebody's profile is, is private, I don't even friend request them. I don't even try to follow them. I'm like, what's the point? I don't care. So make sure you're public in both places. Make sure again, you take a peek at find, share, invite to show you how to set up your profiles and how to post to attract people. But here are some of the things that you can do. Call to actions. You want to be making sure that you're posting call to actions. What this is doing is, is putting an invite out there so when somebody likes it, you can start talking to them immediately about joining a group or immediately about coaching, right? It's a jumping off point for a conversation. That's why it has to do with inviting. You are building relationships and building a point of connection where you can reach out and talk to somebody. Engagement posts. What am, I, what am I talking about that? I'm not talking about, ooh, I'm engaged. I'm talking about like easy to answer things. Red, you know, one of, the shoe, one of the posts I put up that did really, really well was I had a blue shoe on one foot and a black shoe on the other. And I said, black or blue? And people cannot wait to express their opinions. I specifically put up the what's your middle name post today to show you guys this. If you go over to my page right now, everybody's answering, you know, Yes or no posts are really, really simple for somebody to just say yay or nay or A or B, be like this or this, or, you know, what did you want to be when you grow up? Or, um, you know, what's your least favorite chore or, um, you know, things that are just super simple. Like you guys all saw the hearts post that I put up. Like I want to, you know, yellow heart, if you want to lose five pounds, green heart, if you want this, you can use emojis and put different things. But when you're putting posts up that seemingly have nothing to do with anything than getting to know somebody else a little bit better and having them have a little fun, they're going to build engagement and it's going to give you a lot of people to reach out to, to start conversations with. And it's also going to help your next post that you put up that maybe as a call to action post, get a lot more love. The daily ins and outs of your day. Like I said, people want to know you. It's the same reason people watch reality TV is because they want to, they just like that inside glimpse of like people's lives. So that's what they want from you. It's called Facebook for a reason. If you're sharing everybody else's content, nobody gets to know you and nobody cares about you. Struggles, but your struggles with solutions and how you got over it. I don't want anybody just complaining on Facebook that they've got a freaking headache. Nobody cares. I don't want you to complain. I want you to talk about the fact that Maybe today was a struggle for you, but what got you out of it? You know, was it the challenge group? Was it reading something in PD? Was it some, you heard something? Was it, you know, you did your workout? What was it that made you feel better that day? Um, were you struggling with your workout? If so, is that okay? How did you wrap your mind around that? Will you do better tomorrow? Is it all right? Because you know, that means that you're going to have better results. Is it okay? Because you've learned not to beat yourself up. Talk about your struggles, but with solutions or how you got over it. 
You know, I love that saying like, turn your mess into your message. So don't make it just a complain fest. Nobody's on Facebook to see other people complain about their lives. Your journey. What's your financial journey? What's your physical journey? Your mental, emotional journey? You need to be talking about that every day, every single day. How has Beachbody helped you physically? How has Beachbody helped you financially? How has Beachbody helped you mentally or emotionally? What were things from your childhood that maybe you went through that this has helped you through? Those are all the things that you need to be talking about on a, on a daily basis. You know, living paycheck to paycheck or not wanting to get up, you know, in the morning to an alarm clock. Physical things like maybe you couldn't get up the stairs or, you know, you had pain in your feet and you couldn't walk or maybe you couldn't, you know do push-ups before and now you can and your boobs are lifted you know like random stuff like that but sharing yourself in your in your in your journey also where is your train going if you don't know where you're going nobody else is going to want to jump on it talk about where you are taking this business when i sat down with brianna at a restaurant she was my first building coach she was my first diamond coach she that's how i got to one star she told me no she wasn't going to do it but as we walked out of there, I looked at her and I said, I'm going to take this thing to the moon. You watch me. I said, I am going to build this thing and I'm going to be successful at it because she believed me. She signed on and she's still here today. Business success. What have you done? If you made $5 guys, that's a success. If you help somebody, you know, change their life somehow, that's a success. If you help somebody fit into their wedding ring for the first time in months or put on a pair of jeans that they hadn't, or they went shopping and were able to buy a smaller size, or they lost five pounds, or they're just feeling happier, those are wins that you can share. What about yourself? You need to share the wins of your coaches, your challengers, and yourself every single day in every single aspect. Your brand, what is your brand? I just named off a bunch of stuff before I even started talking. What is your brand? brainstorm five to six things. If you guys don't know some stuff about you, ask your audience, what do you think of when you think of me? You know, what do you think of when you think of me? Do you knit? Do you hike? Do you like dogs? Do you have kids? Like, do you have some special talent that nobody knows about? Do you have, you know, some, are you art? Like, are you really great at art? Like what makes you, you that you can share daily to help people get to know you better on social media? And the things that you post, you guys should be the things that share with that other people can look at and say, She's like me, so she can help me. That's it. All right, so check out the file on the team page, you guys, on what to post for ideas. Again, I'll post these links, so you can use that link to get to it if you want to, but you can also just go to the file section of the team page. There is a gigantic list, literally about this long, about things that you can post about. And everything you post about, here's a tip, everything you talk about on a daily basis, everything you go through on a daily basis, Almost everything can relate back to coaching. So if you can do that within your posts, then that's phenomenal. You know, consistency within your business, just like consistency within your workouts. You can talk about that towards other people. You know, like the compound effect. Everything in life has to do with this business. So you can relate it all back. I can't read these because this thing's in the way. So transitioning relationship building convos into invites. This is a question I get all the time. So if it wasn't a straight donut invite that was like literally just here's your invite and you're not responding to somebody who liked one of your invite or call to action posts. So you can't just be like, Hey, I saw you like the post, like love to have you in the group. What are your goals? Then how do you take those relationship building conversations where you were talking about a dog or you're talking about hiking or you're talking about cars or whatever it was and turn that into a conversation about coaching or working out or joining challenge groups and those sorts of things. So the number one tool, wait for it, is going to be combo template. The conversation template guides you through this entire thing. Use it. I cannot tell you how often I tell people to use the conversation template and then they're inviting and they're posting and they're reaching out, but they're not signing anybody. And I'm like, are you using the combo template? And they're like, yep, I'm using it. I'm like, okay, are, are you using it to a T? And they're like, yep, I'm using it to a T. And then I go look at their conversations and I'm like, you are not using it to a T. When in God's name did I say this in the conversation template? No, yeah, you're right. You didn't say that. When did I say to jump in and start, you know, recommending something before they've told you? No, yeah, you didn't tell me that. You guys, you have to use the conversation template, especially if you're a brand new coach, because if you're a brand new coach, you're excited. You're excited and chances are you're going to be a little bit pushy or push something on them or you're gonna talk too much or you're gonna whatever and this is gonna rein it in for you. And it's gonna teach you how every successful coach on this team chats with people. I can tell you that the star diamonds on this team 
when I ask them what they're saying to people, it is exactly what the conversation template is. And when you go through their, when you go through their conversations, it flows exactly how the conversation template tells you to. So I know I just said conversation template like 15 times, but I should say it like 15 more times because you guys have to use the tools that were put in front of you. I have tried to make this business so duplicatable and so easy that a monkey could do it. So use the tools. If you're not, you're making it harder for yourself. So now the conversation template can be found in the team page in the files section. It is always there. And you can watch this super helpful video where I go over how it works and it makes it even more crystal clear. So there it is for you. You can also go straight to my YouTube channel and you can look it up there, but there it is for you. And again, I'm gonna post the slide so it's there. There we go. Questions. Questions are your friend, right? So I said, yes, use the conversation template, but I'm going to dig in and give you a little more help than that for transitioning combos. So ask the right questions to lead your conversation towards an invite. Examples, right? So if you're talking to somebody and you say, where do you live? And they tell you where they live, then you can say, how long have you lived there? Or did you, are you there? For, are you from there originally? And then they'll tell you, and then you're like, okay, cool. And then you're like, do you work there too? And they say, yeah, or nay, or they say where they work. And then guess what, guys? Then you're into the question where you're like, oh, what do you do for work? And you start talking about that, which inevitably will lead to them turning around and asking you what you do, which gives you the in to say, hey, I run online challenge groups to help people get fit. Ever consider joining one? really that easy, right? I just made it seem so easy. It is. Okay. Or, oh my God, you're a new mom. That's so awesome. How old is she, he? And they tell you and it's like, oh, she's, you know, 10 weeks old. And you're like, oh my God, I bet that's crazy. I bet it's crazy getting used to that. Is this your first baby? And they're going to tell you anything like that. And then, you know, if they're telling you they're tired and all that jazz, relate to them and talk to them. Right. But like, you know, and then I don't want to like, then you can just, after you've talked to them and you've seen where they're at, you can say like, I don't want to assume anything, but I wanted to throw it out there. We have a bunch of new moms in our online fitness group that are just loving the community. Not sure if you're at a spot where you can work out again yet. Um, or if you have any goals, like ever considered, you know, joining one really that easy. Or, you know, you talk to somebody and they tell you they're looking for a new job, right? Like you're talking to them about whatever. And then you lead to that and they're telling you that they want, and they want a new job. And you're like, what do you want to do? And they're like, you know, I'm not sure. I'm just not happy where I am. You can be like, I totally get you. I felt the same way. And now I love what I do. Have you ever considered running an online business like me? Guys, these are three examples of things that actually led me to conversations where I signed coaches. These aren't just like made up. This is legitimately conversations that I've had where I've started talking to them about one thing and it's led to challenge group or coaching conversations. It's about asking questions that are going to lead you to a spot where they're either going to ask you a question back where you can ask them if they want to, you know, where you can tell them what they do, or you lead to a spot where you feel comfortable with the invite. Now, if you've chatted with a person for a while and you still aren't getting to that transition period or that spot where it feels good to be able to just ask or they're, they're not asking you the questions back, etc. Maybe you're two, three times into a conversation with them, excuse me, and you're feeling like that. That's when you throw a donut out there. You've talked to them a few times, just throw the donut out. Hey, have you ever considered joining one of my challenge groups? Not sure if you'd be interested, but I have one starting up next week and, you know, a bunch of girls and they're getting great results. Not sure if you have any health and fitness goals. Would you like some more information? Boom. All right. So gone over all of that, right? So now what if you sent the donut and they answered back and said, yeah, I'd like some more information or yeah, I want in or tell me more about it. Or maybe you just had that conversation where you transitioned and you're at the point where they said they'd be interested. Or maybe you messaged them from an invite post and they said, yes, they're interested. This is what I say. I say this every single time. So it's a group that's all about accountability, motivation, support takes place on an app. Sometimes I'll just do it in a private Facebook group where we post about our workouts. You can even track your measurements and weight and progress picks, et cetera. You're able to share as much or as little as you would like with me or the group. We have daily posts in there for you. We like to share recipes, meal plans, prep tips, fit tips, do fun challenges, share sweaty selfies, etc. It's really fun and a great way to stay accountable this time of year. Everyone wants to get fit and healthy. What are your current goals? And it doesn't have to be this exactly, guys, but it's just a short description of what your group is and what they're going to get out of it. And it should end every single time with what are your goals? What are your fitness goals or what are your current goals or what are your health and fitness goals? That's how it should end, always with a question. So you ask that, and then that's going to lead you into digging deep, y'all.
So once they say they're interested in the group, you guys, you ask for their goals. You, then you dig base, you dig deep based on the answers. How many times do we get somebody back that says like, I just want to lose a little weight. That's not enough for me to be like, Oh, I can help you. That's not enough for me to be like, Oh, I can recommend this for you. And if you look in the conversation template, it tells you that you need to ask more conversation. You need to ask more questions. So if somebody tells me they want to lose weight, I'm going to ask them how much weight are you looking to lose? And I'm going to ask them, See, I'm not even looking at the screen right now because I'm doing this. I'm going to ask them, you know, <laughs> I'm going to ask them, how much weight would you like to lose? I'm going to ask them, how long have you felt like this? I'm going to ask them if they can tell me a little bit more about their health and fitness background. What do they struggle with most? How's your nutrition? Can you walk me through a typical day? Like, what does that look like for you? Okay, what do you struggle with within that? Are you craving sweets? Are you craving salty foods? Do you think you may be emotionally eat? Are you having trouble with portions? Do you just not know what to eat? These are the conversations I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask what their fitness level is at, and I'm going to ask all of those questions. And I'm going to take my time. I'm going to take my sweet time. I am going to go back and forth as long as it takes to get out of them what I need so that I can help them. Because my goal is not to make a sale right then and there. My goal is to get to know them and figure out how I can solve their problem, how I can add value to their life. And you can't do that if all you know is I want to lose a little weight. I know nothing when it comes to that. How long have you wanted to lose this weight? Are you doing any workouts currently? How long have you been doing that? Are you following a program? Do you have a trainer? What do you typically do at the gym? Are you lifting weights? Do you use machines or are you doing free weights? Do you do the same routine every day? How long do you work out? These are all the questions I need to know. There's some listed here for you. There's some in the conversation template. Ask as many questions as it takes to get to know them. This is where you spend the most time. It's the investigating phase, the getting to know them phase, the seeing where you can add value and help and recommend the right program for them phase. After this, this is where you ask, based on everything you've told me, I can totally help you. Would you like a recommendation for a program to follow in the group to get you there? Now, tip, if you've taken the time to build the value, do your due diligence and really connect with this part, um, you know, then, then that's when you're going to be able to go after you've recommended program to them. That's when you're going to be able to go, what's your email and what's your shake what flavor of shakeology would you like? And they're just going to trust you and just go for it instead of giving you an objection because you just spent time and they know that you know what they need to get them there. Whew, damn, I'm talking a lot. All right. <laughs> so recommending a program. Guys, I walk you directly through this in the conversation template, and I know I've said conversation template a lot, so it must be important. Ask if they would like a recommendation. I don't want you to just, you know, ask all those questions and then be like, you should do this. Notice I said in that this is the time where you can now turn around and go, based on everything you just told me, would you like a recommendation for you to follow in the group? I will tell you 95% of the time they say yes. It's probably closer to 98% of the time. There's very rarely after somebody has spent that much time with you going over their goals that they're not going to say, yeah, I want your help. You know, ask if they would like you to send them a clip. So after you've recommended them, sometimes they might even say, oh yeah, I've heard of that. I still say, would you like me to send you a clip on each so you can check them out to see what you'd like best? They're both going to work for you. And I list off the reasons why I have recommended those programs. And I ask them if they'd like a clip to which they say, yes. Guys, this link right here shows you exactly how to generate your custom links. This is a YouTube video that I created about how to create customized links through coaching codes. And I even walk you through how to save them as individual little short links in a better place. So it's easier for you. So go ahead and take a peek at that. Again, no brainer. This is something you can turn around and share with a new coach of yours. And they're going to be able to follow all of this to a T. So make sure that you send the clips. And then once they've looked at them, that's when you can say, which one did you like best? They're going to tell you, you're going to say awesome. And then you're going to follow the conversation template from there where you're going to give them the offer of doing just that program or of doing the all access pass. You're going to follow the conversation template to a T. When you say to them, would you like to do just the 21 day fix challenge pack? Or would you like to do the all access pass? They're going to say, what's the difference? Exactly. All right. So next. 
because I know I'm going to get this question. This is all good, Joan, but this is if people just said like, yes, 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 the whole entire way. And sometimes we get objections even when we ask all the questions. So Harry, scary objections. You did it. You got all the way through. You recommended, or maybe you've even sent out the enroller and then an objection happens. That's what you were scared of the whole time, right? So this is what you do. One, you're not going to get as many objections if you've dug really deep. You just won't. It's the truth because you've built that value and people want what you have. They're begging for what you have. Most of the time, they don't even ask the price at that point. And if you do get an objection at that point, you are going to be better equipped to help them through their fear or their excuses that are coming up. For instance, just the other day, I had a girl who I'd gone through all of this with and sent the enroller out to all of a sudden come back to me and say, I think that I'm going to hold off because like, I just don't have, you know, the extra money right now. And I was able to say, well, you just told me that because of convenience reasons, you're skipping your breakfast every morning. And because you're skipping your breakfast every morning, you're making bad decisions when you're at work and you're going out and getting takeout. And then because you're tired from skipping breakfast and eating like crap during your lunch break, you're going and picking up burgers or pizza or something like that and spending more money at dinner. This is going to help you with that because number one, it's going to give you a healthy breakfast that's going to curb your cravings. The the group and myself are going to help you with portioning out your meals and creating things that work for you in your schedule. And by sticking to the plan, you're going to spend less money out. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. I think I'm moving to the UK soon. Can I go ahead and access this online there? Well, actually we just opened up in the UK. So yes, you can. Oh, and literally every excuse that came up afterwards that was going to be, Oh, I can't do this. I had a way to say, actually you do, because I asked so many questions, I was able to turn around and talk them out of that fear-based thought that was keeping them from doing it. Because you guys, everybody has the money and everybody has the time. Those are just the easiest excuses to give. Two, look at them as an opportunity to learn more. So if you get an objection, look at that as an opportunity to learn more about the person. What didn't you ask that you need to know? How's it gonna help you in your next conversation? What can you learn about, you know, what, what are you learning now about them? Like ask them, you know, oh, is it really just the money holding you back? Oh, I feel like you were really, really interested in this. And I know that if you knew that 100% you were going to get the results that you just told me you wanted, repeat their goals to them, that you would do it. So what's holding you back? I feel like it's a little bit of fear. Use it as an opportunity to learn more about them, learn about more about you, learn about how you can better your conversations and he, you know, and, and stave off those objections beforehand. Three, if you get it early in the combo, pretend like you didn't. Just keep asking questions. Alicia actually posted an amazing conversation and the, um, I did it all for the cookies group, which I know this kid right here sitting next to me, Kat was really affected by because she was like, Oh, made me start thinking about things completely differently. The girl said she didn't need to do anything. She didn't want anything. And Alicia just pretended like she didn't even hear her and just kept asking questions about her fitness goals. And whoop, what do you know? She sent back the Shakeology that she bought right then and there or canceled it and bought a challenge pack through Alicia instead. So an example, after the donut, somebody says, I'm already working out. Thanks, but no thanks. And you go, oh, really? That's awesome. What do you do currently? You know, what are your goals right now? How long have you been doing that? That's really awesome. Just start asking a ton of questions. And then you get to the point where you get to that point in the conversation where you can ask them if they want a recommendation. And then there you go. You're right back in the conversation template. Use the objection sheets. So in the files section, we have a ton of sheets in there, three of them. One's about Shakeology objections in particular. One is general objections. Um, and the other one is about coaching in general, um, coaching like objections. And so those three sheets are there for you as backup. And then you guys also share your combo with the team or with your coach or with the crossline coach or with your you know, training group that you're in and ask for help. If you come up with something in your conversation, they're like, I don't know how to get past this. Or what would you say to this? Instead of just giving up and saying, oh, they said, you know, not right now. Or they said this. Don't. Keep going and ask somebody for help. And make your life easy. Conversation template. Again, the conversation template is gold, you guys. If you want to succeed in this business, look at it, get to know it, make it work for you. Text replacement. I'm giving you literally step-by-step. -step instructions on how to do this. You're going to go to your iPhone. You're going to go into settings. You're going to go to general keyboard text replacement. 
and then you're going to hit the little plus sign so you can add a new one and you are going to put snippets from the conversation template or snippets from the objections sheet or maybe it's the beach body disclaimer the flavors of shakeology or those things that you're like your challenge group description you're going to keep those things right there to make your life super duper freaking easy so when you're having a conversation with somebody you can type in one or two letters and it'll pop up an entire paragraph of what you need to say and send it off your donuts are going to be sent in there so in the morning when you look at that list of people you can just go boop, 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 copy you know put paste 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 easy 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 all right so Guys, I sat there the other day and I sent out 75 donuts in 20 minutes. Please tell me how you don't have time to do this business. 20 minutes and I sent out 70 donuts and I sent, and I signed one coach out of that and I had never spoken to her in my life and I have great conversations going and actually three other coaches who signed this week were from that. So example of how you put in the text replacement. It's going to say phrase, right? When you hit that key, when you hit that plus key, and that's where you can enter what that paragraph is that you want to put there. So for instance, if you want to put the flavors of Shakeology response, when somebody says, what flavors do you have? We know we always answer that question. Don't make life hard. Put that in there. And then as your shortcut, you can name it whatever you want. So maybe yours is Flaves, F-L-A-V-S, right? So when you type F-L-A-V-S into your phone, that whole paragraph pops up. Or if you, you could put it as like F1 or whatever you want to name it as for your shortcut, and then you post it and boop, it goes right out. Save your custom links in your text replacement. That's easy peasy, right? I just told you how to generate, generate your customized links and you can use Bitly to make them really short. Save them in your text replacement. So when somebody says, um, yeah, I'd love a recommendation. You ask them if they want the clips, you can send them right over there because you've got them right at your fingertips. Or you can put them in your notes section or you can put them in Evernote. Put them somewhere where it's easy for you to access them no matter where you are. But going in and out of coaching codes and sending those giant long ass URLs is a pain in the butt and it doesn't look very pretty. So go ahead and do this. Objection sheets that are in the file section, you can use those. You can actually put those again in your text replacement. You can ask your coach for help. You can post when you need um, help in the team page or in your training pages and ask for help. And my last tip for you guys within inviting is just be coachable. This business is simple. It's about duplication. If you use the tools that are at your disposal and you stay consistent, your business will grow. You will make success club. You will continue to get better and better and better and have you know, easier results and you will make more money and you will help more people. It's really as simple as that. So that's all I have for you tonight. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. If you guys have any questions or comments or anything like that, you can go ahead and screen them out. Um, yeah. Any questions? Everybody looks shocked or something. <laughs> um... To be honest, I'm honest. To be honest, to make my profile on anything, my profiles on anything public. I know we've talked about this before. How else can you do this? Make them public. I mean, there's, I, I don't know why you're saying that you can't make them public. Is there a reason behind that that I don't know? Um, this question just changed everything for me in the past month. Yes. Question for the key to building that relationship. Yes. Helps you really build value. I used to get so excited initially. Yes, then totally blew it. Yes, this is key. Combo template. Hate to check out all this conversation. I have to go now. Check out the rest of the meeting slides. Post the next one. I don't want to come and use the time. Hey, for example, but we're a one of mine. Done, done, blah, blah, blah. All right, I think that's it. Change donuts consistency. Yes, great, awesome. I'll go ahead and I'll tape the. I'll put. The, I'll post the recording as soon as I can. You guys know it sometimes takes me a little bit, but I'll go ahead and I'll post the. Um, slides in the file section too, because I think that they're helpful and you guys can grab the links and stuff off of them. Um, if there's no questions, I'm going to let you all go. I did it in less than an hour, which is good. Um, anything else? Nope. Nope. Awesome. Love you guys. Have a fantastic night. Go donut yourself to sleep. <laughs>